Good morning and welcome to Nutsford Methodist Church. I'm Peter and I've been asked to do the talk this morning. And as we come to worship, I want to read as our call to worship, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. He humbled you, causing you to be hungry, yet he fed you with manna that neither you nor your ancestors had known in order to teach you that human beings are not to live by food alone. Instead, human beings are to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. As we come together in worship this morning, we remember that you are the King of Kings, you are our Majesty, and we seek to serve you all the days of our lives. And Lord, we remember the promises that you give to us, and we praise you for those. We praise you that in the comings and the goings, in the goodbyes and in the welcomes, you are steadfast. And Father, we trust that in this time of change for our church, you are preparing the way to further your kingdom. And we seek to follow you. But Lord, as we come before you, we are aware of all of our shortcomings. We know that we fall short of the perfection of you. And so Father, we 
Think now of all of those things that we've done wrong. The hurtful things we've said and thought. And Father, we're sorry for the times that we have not listened to your still small voice that dwells within us, calling us and guiding us towards you. And Father, we trust in your forgiveness as we lay our sins at the foot of the cross. And we pray all of these things in your precious name. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. The readings today are from Psalms 145 verses 8 to 9 and 14 to 21 and Matthew chapter 14 verses 13 to 21. Psalm 145 Jehovah is kind and merciful, slow to get angry, full of love. He is good to everyone and his compassion is intertwined with everything he does. The Lord lifts the fallen and those bent beneath their loads. The eyes of all mankind look up to you for help. You give them their food as they need it. You constantly satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. The Lord, the Lord is fair in everything he does and full of kindness. He is close to all who call on him sincerely. He fulfills the desires of those whose reverence and trust him. He hears their cries for help and rescues them. He protects all those who love him, but destroys the wicked. I will praise the Lord and call on all men everywhere to bless his holy name and forever and for ever. Matthew chapter 14. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he went off by himself in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowd saw where he was heading and followed by land from many villages. So when Jesus came out of the wilderness, a vast crowd was waiting for him and he pitied them and healed those of them who were sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, it is already past time for supper and there is nothing to eat here in the desert. Send the crowd away so they can go to the villages and buy some food. But Jesus replied, that isn't necessary. You feed them. What? they exclaimed. We have exactly five small loaves of bread and two fish. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and two fish, looked up into the sky and asked God's blessing on the meal. Then broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to place before the people. And everyone ate until full. And when the scraps were picked up afterwards, there were twelve baskets fulls left over. About five thousand men in the crowd that day, beside all the women and children. Thank you.
of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. The story we heard this morning, the feeding of the 5,000, is the only miracle Jesus performed that is recorded in all four Gospels. We can therefore assume that all four Gospel writers consider this story highly significant it is a story that is very well known, but like so many stories, there are nuances that may, you may have not noticed or considered before. The first is the setting, the time. Jesus gone to a place he could be on his own. He had just been told of the death of his cousin, John the Baptist. Based on his human reaction to hearing about Lazarus's death, in a later story, one can only imagine that Jesus was at this very time at least shaken and most probably quite upset. This is why he probably withdrew to a quiet place to reflect and come to terms with what had happened. However, as it is described in the passage, the crowds followed him and it says in the account written by Matthew that he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Whether the disciples were concerned about Jesus' welfare or his state of mind, something quite strange happens. The disciples tell Jesus what to do. This is a remote place and it's getting late, they say to Jesus. So send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Having seen Jesus perform the first of his miracles, turning water into wine by this time already, and also having witnessed the healing in the hours leading up to this, we may have expected them to come to Jesus and perhaps say, Master, there are 5,000 people here and they're getting hungry. What would you have us to do? But they didn't do this. Instead, they tell Jesus what he should do. Jesus then challenges them and tells them, give them something to eat. Now, by this time, the disciples must have ascertained that there was, a, was a, only a young boy who had five loaves and two fish. When I was thinking about this boy, I started thinking about quantities. Do you remember how long it felt uh, between summer holidays to summer holidays when you were a child? To me, it seemed equivalent to about 10 years. And do you remember lifting something and expressing the opinion, it weighs a ton? Well, when they, I think that this young boy may have thought that he had a feast when he was asked if he had anything to share. Adults might have said that it was such a small amount that it was not worth mentioning. But when I picture him, I see a smiling boy pleased to help out the disciples and solve their problems. But there's a lesson here. The boy gave all he had to share with others. And due to this gesture, his generosity, his part of the miracle has been retold for centuries. I'm not sure about you, 
but I think I could imagine a little how the disciples might have felt. It is like the time when someone decides to drop in unexpectedly and you have to make a dinner stretch further. This is perhaps something that you have experienced, particularly when you have children who decide to arrive unexpectedly. However, it is one thing making dinner spread to three or four people. But five pieces of bread and two fish to be shared between 5,000, well, that must have seemed impossible in the eyes of disciples at that particular moment. Impossible, illogical. But Jesus knew that they had seen him do miracles, yet even though they had been telling Jesus what to do, he responds with grace and love, enough to answer the problem and feed them. It is always very humbling when we see Jesus and his unlimited love, which still flows out to the disciples and, of course, to us today. In the passage, it is then written, Jesus says, bring them here to me. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. I have in my mind the pictures from Bournemouth a few weeks ago, a vision of people everywhere. But the difference is that these people were waiting with expectation. The people being directed to sit down on the grass must have real faith in Jesus, having already been asked about their provisions, what food they had, and then sitting down on the grass in anticipation of receiving food. That must have been something special. They really showed their trust in Jesus. In a similar manner, do we trust God? that he will provide what we need. Perhaps as well, some of the crowd would have remembered how God had provided manna from heaven to the Israelites as they wandered through the desert following their escape from Egypt, a reference to Deuteronomy that I read a little earlier. They recognized Jesus as the Messiah, so they perhaps thought that God would again provide food in a similar manner. I first met Shane Roots at the European Creative Ministry Conference in Rugby. And I remember that one of the things he talked about in reference to building teams was the notion of eating together. People are often more relaxed around a table full of food. Eating together today is often a sign of friendship. But like in Jesus' time, it's also a time when people are more receptive to hearing about the gospel. That is partly why the Alpha is so successful, as it starts with a meal. When you read the stories in the New Testament, there are many times that Jesus shares a meal with his disciples and the people he is ministering to. Mary and Martha, Zacchaeus, and of course this, the feeding of the 5,000, to name but a few. Jesus spent time with people while he was eating and drinking so much so that the Pharisees refer to him as a glutton and a drunken in Matthew 11, verse 19. Jesus' teaching also emphasizes the importance of food. Jesus tells his followers, I am the bread of life, John 6, verse 35. But as well as this, Jesus likened the kingdom of heaven to a banquet, a wedding banquet. Perhaps the most famous story concerning a shared meal is the Last Supper, which is celebrated when we have the Holy Communion with, with its bread and wine. Now, bread and wine was a staple diet in the Middle East in Jesus' time, and this story reminds us that food figured prominently in the final days of Jesus' uh, Jesus life and his death. Our eating habits have once again hit the headlines in the last few days. There has been talk of the amount people have eaten during lockdown, comfort eating. Food can be a form of comfort, and whilst we should not condone excessive eating, for some people food is so highly significant in the situation they find themselves that it takes on a new perspective. Charles Allen, a psychologist, tells this story. As World War II was drawing to a close, the Allied armies gathered up many hungry orphans. They placed them in camps where they were safe and well-fed. 
But despite the excellent care they received, the orphans slept badly. They seemed nervous and afraid. Finally, a psychologist came up with the solution. Each child was given a piece of bread to hold after he or she was put to bed. This particular piece of bread was just to be held, not eaten. This extra piece of bread produced wonderful results and the children started to sleep undisturbed throughout the night. The extra piece of bread had a wonderful effect on the children because as they went to bed, they instinctively knew that they would have food to eat the next day. Returning again to the passage from Matthew, it is written that at the end of the meal, the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread. This phrase is highly significant. Why 12? Because that is the number of tribes of Israel, named after Jacob's sons. What this means is that there was enough left over from this feeding to feed the whole nation of Israel. This miracle, as well as the others in this context, were designed to make people aware that Jesus was far more than a prophet. The miraculous works would prove his claims that he was the Son of God, the King of the Jews, the Lord of all creation. Whilst this story is about physical food that nourishes the body, the people like we do today have spiritual appetites that needs satisfying too. Jesus demonstrates in this passage from Matthew 14 that he alone can meet all our appetites. Let us pray together. Jesus, we think of Rob and Carol this week, thanking you for their time with us as they move to a new church and a new circuit. We ask for your bountiful blessings on them, for their faithfulness and perseverance, for their leadership and compassion, for their determination to declare hope in our community. We pray, bless them in a new way, in a new place, and continue through them to let your kingdom come. We pray for Alan and Carol as they prepare to join us. We pray too that you bless them for the work they have completed and fill them with joy and with the gifts they need for the work ahead. We pray for all those who are unwell, for those preparing for surgery or receiving treatment and for those going through other significant life events. We pray for Hannah Webb, Brendan, Liz McGrath, Kate Walker, Kate Wilkinson, Pete Thompson, Sarah McCaitney, Margaret Rimmer, Alison Maynard, Hilda Hewitt, Moira Rimmer, Alison McDowell, and Jeffrey Lomas. Take a moment to pray for others we know who need your blessing at this time. We ask for comfort for those who are bereaved and for all who are socially, socially isolated. We pray for everyone touched by anxiety and fear over the threat of COVID-19 and for those who are filled with the need to meet up with loved ones, to spread their wings again, to enjoy life again. As you have reminded us today, you are a generous, giving God. Take compassion of those who come to you and you give good gifts. You are ever present, ever loving, ever willing to be close to us. In our daily struggles, be with us and draw our eyes to you. Lord, we bless you for your reckless love. Pour out your reckless love 